Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of the Learning FreeCAD for Beginners where we're teaching the fundamentals of FreeCAD from a beginner's perspective whilst we learn workflows. We're moving on to surfacing workflows and today we're going to be looking at creating this object using a split surface and we're going to be following both a part workflow for a surface and a part workflow for a solid. So this one is done with just open geometry and doing surfaces and shells and this one is done with a solid so there are differences in here and we're going to be showing both workflows giving you both the workflows so you can choose between them as you may want to use one over the other for certain applications and you'll get an understanding of where you use those in the future the more practice and the more knowledge you gain so i hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this workflow if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. So we've established that we're using a part workflow. So we're gonna create a new document. And first thing I'm going to do is do the revolve. So we're going to need a profile. So I'm going to come into the sketcher and I'm going to create a new sketch along the XF plane. So new sketch, XF plane, and OK. I'm going to create an arc using an endpoint and rim point arc. I'm going to span the center and this Y axis. Place an arc in there. And I'm just going to take the middle of the arc and place it along that y-axis with point on y constraint. So we have our arc, make sure it's connected along the x-axis, again with a point on line constraint. Let's close the sketch and come back over to the part workbench and create a rotate. So we make sure the sketch is selected, use the revolve button, we'll come up to part and revolve. Next we need to choose the global axis to rotate this on. We look down to the right, we can see our navigation handler, and I'm going to go along the X axis. So X is running this way. Direction X, and we need to be 180 degrees. So it's half a sphere. I'm going to go symmetrical angle as well. If I hit OK, we get our sphere rotated. Now, at this point, it's up to you how you want this. At the moment, I've got basically almost like an ellipsoid. I can come back into the revolve and come into the sketch and decide that I actually want the sphere by bringing this up and connecting it to the center if I wanted to. With Quinson constraint, I've got the auto remove redundant constraint, so that's removed that constraint there. You can see that we have the sphere. Now I've got the sphere, let's have a look at the surface I want to create. For that, I'm gonna be using the XZ plane. I'm gonna be sketching a single line. So at the moment, we're working in surfaces. So come into the XZ plane, looking at it from that position, come over to the sketcher and create a sketch, make sure nothing's selected. That means when I create a sketch, we get the planes come up that we want to attach them to. And I want it along the XZ plane. Now we're viewing this from the XZ plane. It's worth mentioning that this will section through the center because we've placed this symmetrical to the center. So we need to come up to sketch and view section to section through so we can see through that. And now my surface, I can sketch in with a single piece of geometry. I'm gonna use the endpoint and rim point arc. It's up to you which one you want to use. You can use a B-spline if you want. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna place my surface in. So my surface is sitting along here. And what I'm going to do is take these two points. I've got the auto remove redundant constraints on and the center point and make them symmetrical using the symmetry constraint. So my surface that I'm sketching in is gonna be something like this. If I hit close, we can see that sketch runs through the center of this object. Let's come over to the part and click on that sketch and extrude it. 
I'm going to screw this by some length. Go 50 millimeters, but I'm going to make sure it's symmetrical so it comes out from the end and the front. If I hit OK, you can see how that's extruded. If the extrusion's not enough, come back in and we'll set it to something like 100 millimeters. I'm not using any constraints on length. Just to get through this and just show you the technique. So what we've got is the sphere and the surface that I want to place this dome across. We'll remove this section in a moment. Next thing I want to do is look at the profile of what I want to create from the top. So we've got this here. I'm going to create a profile in the sketcher. This is going to be closed sketch, so I'm going to make sure nothing's selected and create a sketch. Again, it's going to place me upon one of the base planes. So I'm going to go for the XY plane, the one that's selected here, and OK. For this, I'm going to have it in a panel. So this is where we're sketching the actual panel. I'm going to come into the rectangle and use a rounded rectangle and sketch a rectangle in here. It's actually behind, so let's use a sketch view section so I can see through there. So I can see the circle and I can see the sides of the surface and I've placed my rounded rectangle in there. And we can make some constraints like taking these two and making the symmetrical to the center using the symmetry constraint. I'm not going to constrain this right down again because we're working at speed but I'm just going to place some constraints in here just to get them centered and I'm just going to pull these in like so. So that is now my view. So if I come back to the sketch view section, we can see how that sits there. I hit close. The sketch sits under the surface. And what I'm going to do is click on the sketch, come over to the part, make sure the sketch is selected. And I'm going to extrude this. Let's extrude this up around about 15 millimeters. But this strewed is created as a solid, which I don't want. I'm working with surfaces. So I want to change this to a surface or what would be a shell. So I'll click on that, come into the strewed, come down to solid and set this to false. Therefore, I have a shell in there that I can use to split this surface here. If I try to split this with a solid, it might not produce the effect that I want. So let's move on to splitting these now. I want to click the surface that I want to keep, this one here. And I want to extract out this shape from this surface, like so. Now come up to part after control selecting both of those. So I selected the surface, this one here, and then control clicked this extrude, this rectangle. Cut apart, split, slice apart. And it looks like a face has been imprinted on this surface here. If I click on the inside face, which is the right shape, you'll see that we'll get some slices on the left hand side inside a folder. Now I want to keep this slice. So I'm going to rename that as panel slice. And I'm going to click on the other one, which is this outside part, and press the spacebar. This will hide it from view. I now got to do the same with the sphere, which is the revolve. So click on the one I want to keep, the panel, control click the sphere, Come out to part, split, slice apart. We now have the circle inside, but the revolver's disappeared. This is what we want because we want to actually remove this circle as well. So click on that circle. We can see inside that we've got this slice 001.1. We'll press the space bar and that gets rid of that. The panel slice, the one we want to keep now is this one. So I'm going to rename that one, right click, rename, and call this one 
panel slice with hole. So what's happened to our evolve? Well, this is embedded in this panel slice here. So if I open this up and open up the slice 01, we can see the revolve is sitting in here. So these are the objects that create this operation. I'm going to press the spacebar on that revolve to get it back. This time I'm going to do the reverse. So I'm going to click on the revolve, the one I want to keep, and control click the panel slice with hole. And again, I'm going to come up to part, split, and slice apart. We've now got this slice running around here, which I don't want, so I'm going to click on that and press the space bar. So we've got our new revolve slice, which I can rename to revolve slice. Inside that revolve slice, let's just shrink these two up. So we've got the revolve slice inside that. We have a slice zero two, and inside that we have the original revolve and the panel slice with hole. Press the space bar, that brings back this slice here. And you can see those are sliced apart in a way that we can join these two together and produce one surface. So to do that, we can use a fuse. So that's a union. So the Boolean operations work on surfaces as well as solids. So we just select both of those, control select both of those, select it in here, and come up to part, Boolean, and union. We can select it from the toolbar if you want. It's up here in the toolbar. Once those are unioned, what will happen is the fusion, the result of the union will be placed inside this folder. We can take that and drag it up onto the top project, the unnamed project that I've got at the moment because I haven't saved it, and drop it in there. So I've just dropped it in there, and you can see the fusion is sitting there now. And that's the fusion that's been created. So we're starting to get some shape to our fusion. Now we want to add some thickness to this. There's a couple of ways we can do it, but I'm going to be using a 3D offset. So click on the fusion. We've got this icon on the toolbar, which is the 3D offset. We don't see it, we can drop this down and you can see 2D, 3D offset there. But I'm gonna use the part and come down to the 3D offset because these menus don't really change. So they will be there all the time. When we hit that, what actually happens is we create a 3D offset. So we're creating a thickness to this. And we're offsetting that in 3D space. So we can fill that thickness if we want. Click fill, and we can add some offset to this. So let's add a two millimeters of offset, like so. And we've created that there. That's okay, that. Last thing I'm going to do now is add some blending between these with a fillet. Must be stressed that if we look at the offset, if we come into here, the fusion is still available. So it's still visible. We need to click on that and press the space bar. The reason why that's visible is because the offset has two options. One's a field option and one's just an offset option. So in both cases, we've got two outputs. We could say that the offset that is filled should be hidden, but by default, they're both kept visible. So we've got to come in here to make that invisible. If we don't, we have the chance of selecting that fusion and add in a fillet when we're supposed to add in a fillet to the offset. So now when I select the edge that runs around this sphere and come up and apply the fillet and set this to say three millimeter and hit enter, we get this fillet that runs around here. And we can adjust that fillet by double clicking on it and setting it to whatever we want. You can still see the sketch that runs along here. So I click on that, you can see the sketches there. Just press the space bar, that hides the sketch. So now what we've done is attached two surfaces together. One a curved surface, this could be planar if we wanted it, and a dome, a spherical dome there. And we've done some slicing against the surfaces to allow them to be attached together.
take a look at the same workflow, but this time with solids. So for this one, we have the same objects, except for this is strewed. We've changed the solid to true. This one, we've extruded upwards as well as sideways. So we went sideways first, and then we went upwards to create the thickness. And this revolve, if we look in here and look at the sketch, you can see I've got closed geometry for the sketch. So we have three solid objects. I'm going to first hide this is strewed. And we're going to be dealing with these two first. So first of all, I'm going to take this revolve and control click the surface and cut apart, split and slice apart. What we now have is three slices inside. So if I open this up, we can see we've got three. So we've got this one, this middle section and this slice. And this is due because if we look at the original slice, which was being removed, is strewed, we can see that the midsection is due because of this is strewed, the thickness of that is strewed. So when we start taking these away, then we were left with extra faces. That's it at this point. I'm going to bring back the original revolve. I can see I've got the original revolve there and the original strewed. I'm going to take the one that I want to keep and then click the one I want to remove, which is the revolve. And we're looking to create this circle in here, this void. Part, split, slice apart. I can now hide the void. And now I've got the revolve and the surface. But I do have some extra faces. So I've got this one in here, which is a slice. So we've got a slice inside here. And you can see we've got an extra item that's been added to our chain. When we do the fusion, we have to bring these all together. This can just add an extra step on top or can produce things that we don't want or even things that we do. For instance, we can take this circle, remove it out and add some fasteners to that, do some extra modeling on top to create a feature out of that slice. Doing the same operations in the part design, trying to create this surface will add extra time on top of your workflow. We would have to create additional bodies it hasn't got the split operations that you've got in the part workbench. So we're going to have to do that with booting features and it doesn't have the flexibility of working with solids and surfaces all in one workbench. Let's complete this workflow and bring back the original extrude. Take the one I want to keep, the one I want to remove, part, split and slice apart. Therefore we've got our finished model, now we can control select each of the parts and do a fusion by boolean union. And we have the finished model. Again, we can add filleting using the fillet tool and fillet the edge. And we're finished. We've got some extra faces, but it doesn't really matter. We don't have to apply a 3D offset because we've got the thickness that we want throughout. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.